So a lot of the tasks that we want to do are going to be really tedious. Like if I want to create a program that said, um, I want you to count all the way from 0 to 100. Um, what you'd have to do is print 0, print 1, print 2, print 3, and all the way to 100. And that would be pretty tedious. Um, it may just kill you. So loops will kind of save your life, right? Uh, loops, with loops, I could do that same task, print all the numbers between 0 and 100. I could probably do that in four lines of code. Um, in fact, let's, let's do that. I want to print off all the numbers 0 to 100. Um, watch what I'm going to do. The first thing I'm going to uh, do is the is name this thing uh, diagonal.py, um, and we're going to save it in the lecture folder um, in this packet. Right? So just make sure you're keeping track of where everything um, should go. So I'm saving this as diagonal.py. Uh, um, I'm going to teach you your first loop, 4x, 4x in range, right? 0 to something, right? Okay. This is a super useful loop. Uh, you're going to use this for loop um, every single time that you know exactly how many times you want something to run. Um, and in this case, you'll see that I put this little question mark. That's basically how many times I want it to run. So I said that I wanted to run, let's say, let's start off with 10 before we do like that 100 challenge, right? So 4x in range 0 to 10. I'm just going to print off a basic message. I'm going to print hi. Watch what happens when I run this program. Hi, 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 hi. It's going to do it 10 times. Um, and if I just change that to 100, well, same thing. Um, I want to print off different numbers, though, each time. So to do that, I don't want anything in quotation marks. Um, I want to print off a different number each time. Well. One of them is already built in. There's a way to do it that's already built in. Basically, we're saying for x in range 0 to 100. So this is just like your math class. x just stands is like a, uh, a number. It's a variable, right? And it's going to start basically at 0, and then it's going to be 1, and then it's going to be 2. And this loop is going to keep running until x equals 100, and then it's going to stop, right? So if I want to count all the numbers 0 to 100, um, let's start with 10 so we can kind of see what's going on. Watch what I'm going to do first. I'm just going to literally print off x um, because that's what it's telling me to do, right? So if I save that, watch what happens, and a weird little thing will happen. Ooh. Starts off at 0, and then it gets all the way to 9. So for x in range 0 to 10, really runs through the numbers 0 through 9. And then once it gets to 10, it stops before it prints. So if you want to really get the numbers um, between 1 and 10, like if you thought that this was going to um, print all the numbers up to 10, we would have to do x plus 1 each time. Now it starts at 1 and goes to 10. If I want to print off all the even numbers um, uh, between now and, and, and 20, I could just do 2 times x each time. And so when x first begins, uh, it'll start at 0. And then it'll and and zero times two is zero, and then it'll become a one. One times two is two, and so forth, all the way until it gets up to nine. Because remember, it won't get to ten, right? And it'll stop at eighteen. So that's how you do it with the even numbers. So we can use this x in the four x in, in in range zero to ten. We can do that. We can also do something like this, where we have some sort of counter. So I could start my counter at zero, and then I could just print off what the counter is. So if I, if I do this, it's going to print off all those zeros because I'm not updating my counter every time through the loop. I would have to do this move. Each time I want to set the counter to whatever it was before, but then I'm going to add one. It's a super common move. It's going to be a move that's going to be in every single program that you do from here on out, that you're going to have some sort of counter equals counter plus one, turn equals turn plus one. We're just saying the next time through, I want it to be one bigger. So that's me counting by ones. Right? I could do the same thing. I could have it each time. I could have the, the counter multiplied by two each time and watch what that does. Whoa, what happened? Oh, because my counter started at zero. Zero times two, no matter how many times you do it, will always be zero. But if I start at one, watch what happens. One 
twice as big as 2, twice as big as 4, twice as big as 8, 16, 32. So that's a doubling each time. Okay, so let's start, uh, start talking about the challenge in this one. Um, I want to kind of show you what we need to do. So I need to create a program that if I say I want to have a height of 4, I want it to print off a star, 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 four stars, and then three stars, and then one star, and then like that, right? So it's going to go diagonally like that. Um, actually, I'm going to reverse that. If I say four, I want it to do this. Don't ask me why I changed my mind. It'll become clear in a little bit. So if I want to print that thing off, um, I'm going to use a loop to do it. And if I'm looking at it, if the input was four, how many times did this thing run, right? The faster we're able to pick up patterns, um, the better. So if I said four, this ran four different lines. So already I know what I want to do a little bit. Um, I'm going to get an input, and I'm going to have this thing run that many times. Because if they would have said six, all I have to do is run it two more times. So the first thing that I'm going to do is let's go back to my code and I'm going to have to ask a question. I guess I'm going to put like rows is going to equal the integer input of how many rows. So how many times do I want my loop to run? I want it to run row amount of times. And so let's just try a little, little test. So if I print just the word test, now remember I have to put that in quotation marks because if I don't put that in quotation marks, it's looking for the variable test, which isn't defined anywhere. So I'm saying literally the word test. Uh, oh, okay, really, really uh, good little problem solving thing. I ran this and it said the, the error was in line four this is perfectly good code in line four. So a lot of times Python will give you the error code and it will be in the line above it. So take a look at that. You'll see that I didn't close up my second set of parentheses. Um, fool owner. So if I say how many rows, and I said seven, row, rows, rows, crows. Okay, how many rows? Six. And it should print off six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now really the only uh, thing that I have to do now is have it first print off one star, then two stars, then three stars, then four stars. So I'll notice that the first time through the loop, uh, let's make a counter, right? And there's lots of different ways to do this, but I want to just kind of show the counter way, right? Um, if the first time through I want to print one star like that, right? And the second time I want to do two, and the second time I want to do three like that. Um, the way that I want to do that is I'm going to do counter equals counter plus one. Right? Um, and watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this star symbol and I'm going to multiply it by counter. So think about that for a second. The counter starts at 1, so the first time that this print function comes up, it's going to be that star one time. And what's the next line of code say? Well, it was 1, I'm going to add 1 to it, so now counter will be at 2. And now it's going to be the star times counter twice. Now it'll be 3 times 3. Now it'll be 4, 4 of them. Right? Control S, watch what this is going to look like. How many rows? Six rows. And it makes that little star, uh, star sign like that. If I wanted to ask, you know, see how it's the little stars? If I want to do it for any symbol, I would just get that from the user like this. Symbol equals the input, unput, input of symbol. Friend. Oof. Oof. 
There we go. So now we'll get a symbol from the user. And instead of just having to uh, print this uh, counter out, um, I can just print symbol that many times. Let's run it. How many rows? I want 10 rows. What symbol? Let's do money sign. Yeah, baby. OK. There's another way to do this, too, um, where I wouldn't have to use the counter. Two. Two. Instead of times counter, I'm just going to do x. Now, if you think about that, right, the first time through the loop, what's x? First time through the loop, x is a 0, right? The second time, it's going to be a 1. The second time, it's, it's going to be a 2, a 3, a 4. And it's going to keep increasing from 0 all the way until it hits the number of rows I say. So if I said 7, once it gets to the 7th row, it'll just stop, right? And it won't actually print that 7th time. So this will get me pretty close, I mean, like really close. Watch what happens when I put in 4. I'm going to put in 4 money signs. See how only 3 printed out? Remember the way that we did with multiplication? If the first time through it's 0, 0 symbols is the very first one. So if I did want this to run, I would have to do x plus 1 amount of times, right? So x is a 0 the first time through. 0 plus 1 is obviously 1. And so that'll be my true first one. Let's run through it. I want six rows. I'm going to use a money sign. And now it works out perfectly, OK? So like they say um, in, in one of the strangest expressions of all time, uh, many different ways to skin a cat. Um, and you only need to know how to skin a cat one way, um, which is probably one too many ways to know how to skin a cat.